So first, how's it going? Good, very good. Yeah. Out on tour, I saw you hanging out with John Mayer. Yes. Uh, big deal. Insane, dude. Insane. Let's talk about that for a second. I mean, John Mayer, you looked up to him. How did that happen in Toronto last week? Did John Mayer say, hey, Sean, I got this idea I want to bring out on stage? So literally like four days before the show, he texted me and he was like, um, would you like to just come in on a song? And I was like, just like that? Like, that? you're just going to say that? Like, it's not the biggest deal in the world? And I was like, oh. <laughs> no, but, and so for four days, I didn't tell my friends and I was like freaking out about it. Um, and then the last day, it ended up going well. The rehearsal was so fast, I thought I was going to mess up, got on stage. And it was the most magical thing. I love you! Yeah. 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 John Mayer and Shawn Mendes and Mercy on yeah. 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 Who did a better job? Yeah, John. Shawn! <laughs> Shawn! All right, so um, we got some questions. Yeah. Let's talk about this, too. So almost, what, your first show, you're on stage in front of all these people. So many people, probably. You go from your bedroom to a sold-out show. What was it like for you to go from your bedroom to on stage with so many people? Were you, uh, how'd you overcome that that shock? Were you nervous? It's what like, did you to overcome that? It's still like, honest, honest to God, like every time, no matter if I'm on stage right now, I'm nervous, no matter right. what, when I go on stage for, how many people, I mean, sometimes I walk into a room and I literally have to just meet them, 10 people, and I get nervous, you know what I mean? Things don't ever really change, but that's what keeps you on your toes, and that's what keeps everything exciting every time, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, who knew what, what was going to happen when you walked out it's on literally stage? literally like every time I walk on stage and play the first time I did it, it feels like it every time. Do you remember the first song you ever played when you picked up that guitar? Um, the first song, I think the first song I learned was The 18 by Ed Sheeran. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, she was there. She, no, I don't she know was how there. She was I there, know, she was probably. <laughs> All right, so the stages keep getting bigger and bigger. I mean, last year we're talking about Madison Square Garden. Woo! Woo! I think, you I think they it. might have been there. Yeah! Hello, review from this girl over here. You killed it. Thank you. I'll also smash my weed. So uh, let, let's talk about. If you had to make one sound that describes how it feels to be on stage at a Madison Square Garden, what Woo! would it be? Like, how do you describe? I, do, I don't know. Like, <laughs> for me, it would be. I don't know. But literally, I mean, I always say this every time, but and I don't just say that because I'm in New York right now. But that show, something very special happened. It felt like for a moment, everybody's feet raised a couple inches off the ground, and it was. I think I remember. It was it, amazing. I don't know. You just because it was MSG or whether it was just the vibe in the arena that night, it was very special. I still love the blue ball that was at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Do you keep that in your room? What? Do you keep the ball? <laughs> oh, yeah, it fits, it fits. It yes. fits in the room? Yeah. You can't sleep anywhere, but No, it is I sleep on the ball. All right, so, I mean, traveling all over the world, lifestyle is kind of crazy. How do you stay in touch with the people that matter your most, like your friends, your mom, Snapchat? Yes, <laughs> tons of Snapchat. Tons of Snapchat. I'm all over Snapchat. Um, I mean, it, it, it takes effort. Like, that's what I think a lot of, you know, a, a lot of artists or maybe people who travel a lot say, like, yeah, because I travel so much, I don't see my friends as much, or I don't speak to them, but it, you have to put that effort in to stay close with the people you love, and, and it's always worth it because, you know, when you get to that point where things are incredible, you don't want to be there alone. You want to have those people that you, from the start, to share with. So. Has, has anybody told you that, because, or did you just learn that on your own? It's kind of something you pick up. I mean, you see people who've left behind friends, and it's not a, it doesn't seem nice, you know right. what I mean? You know, having your friends close to you and, and your family close to you, especially when you're successful, is when it's at its best. I think it's cool because you bring your friends along as well, like making your album, I totally, remember. Yeah. You, you rented out a cabin. Yeah, we were up in the woods in, in, in the upstate woods. New York. I'm yeah. sure someone knows what cabin this is. Yeah, but I, I will. Know. Look it up, I found it. Uh, all right, so your music helped a lot of people, teens, parents, old, young, though through the hard times, right? So how does it help you in the same way? Does your own music help you when you perform it? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the funniest thing is that sometimes you write a song that's inspirational um, and you forget what you wrote about. And then I'll find myself going through hard times in life and being playing a show. For instance, I have a song called A Little Too Much, and I'll be oh standing on stage. I love it. And it feels like every, and this happens to me all the time, but every time I start that song and the fans sing along, it's like the meaning of that song, you know, enhances by 100,000, and it kind of everything 
make sense in that moment. Do you know what I mean? So you don't really understand what you're writing about until you're singing it with them on stage, and then it, the two worlds collide, and it's really magical. I'm sure that's like a moment. Like, totally, every single time. We all love Just you. like when you were flying at Madison Square Garden over there. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, what inspired you to get involved with the T.J. Martell Foundation? I was just very excited, and I was excited to see, which I'm starting to see, some families come in, which is always, I love you guys to death. You know? <laughs> and some younger kids in the audience, so I want to hang out with them. So we're going we're gonna to ask, also get some questions from you guys out here, too. Uh, so so let's, let's, start, let's start right here. Don't get nervous. You only have one question. She seems so calm. She's pretty Venos. cool. I am pretty cool. Thank yeah. you. Good. What's your name? Sophia. Hey, Sophia. Sophia. Say hi, Sophia. Hi. But how do I? Yeah. How did you pick that up? I can't even hear her. You know she's. Great. How do I convince my parents to let me get a tattoo? Oh. You have to be 18. I was I was 15, 16, 17, and I wanted a tattoo, and I'm so. Late. But once you're 18, how old are you? 14. When you're 18, she's like. If, if well, I'll say this, if it has a good meaning. Yeah, just don't get anything. <laughs> like, you look like her what, what were you like when you first asked for a tattoo versus when you were allowed to get a tattoo? Oh, it was like, Mom, I want to get a tattoo of a lion. I was like, why do you want to get a tattoo? They look amazing. You should see these photos. No way. It wasn't until I had something that had, had true meaning and then I was also 18 years old. Right. Um, that Unless you had a pet lion. Unless I had a pet lion, that would make sense. Leo! Alright, let's see. Let's see. Oh, uh, let's go right there. Hello. What's your name? Hi. What country is the most exciting to play in London? In Europe? Hmm. I'm very excited to play London. We're playing at the O2 in London. Yay. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. <laughs> All right, let's. We got some lightning round questions, so we'll get back to your questions. Right. Lightning round. A sec. All right, so what song do you listen to when you need a confidence boost? Confidence boost? Too Good by Drake. <laughs> What about, what about when you're feeling nervous? Uh, when I'm feeling nervous? <clears throat> I don't know. What, what song kind of like mellows you out, kind of like meditation style? Yeah, better be there, there's, John well, John Mayer, yeah, I guess. Yeah. There's this playlist called Acoustic Afternoon on Spotify, which is like what I listen to whenever I'm nervous, if you, if you ever need that. You probably all know about it. Now, Sean, knowing you over the last two years, you've uh, you hit the gym a lot. A couple times. A couple times. <laughs> What about when you're feeling pumped or right before you go on stage? What's that song that gets you hyped up? Um, I guess it was super hyped up. Do you have a gym song that you listen to all the time? Gym song? What? Like, why is it? Why am I drawing blanks on everything? I'm <laughs> what am I listening? To? Honestly, honestly, God, sometimes I even listen to like old demos of Mercy. Yeah. <laughs> That gets, that gets me pumped up sometimes, um, but if, if not, I'll listen to probably some Drake, some okay. of the new albums. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. What about at home, just hanging out, no one looking around? Oh, uh, actually, I love John Bellion. Actually, he's John great. Yeah. What about when you just want to dance like no one's watching? That's Drake. So good? Very young. Yeah. <laughs> not going to happen right now. <laughs> Why not? All right. What are your goals for the future? You've accomplished so much over the past few years. What does the future hold for you and, and your fans? Um, I think we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. Woo! Woo! Do you mind if he keeps doing what he does? Yeah! Yeah! Sounds, very, sounds very silly, but I, I truly mean that. I just want to keep creating music that you guys love. Not only you guys, but like everybody loves. And I'll keep coming back and playing for you guys and meeting you guys. And I'll do that to the day I go. Woo! All right, let's get a few more questions in, all right? Jumping up and down. Um, I don't even remember my question. <laughs> oh, it's okay, I it's don't okay. remember my answer. <laughs> Are we allowed to ask for like hugs? Can we get pictures with Can we get hugs? A hug? A hug? I can't remember that. What does that mean? Six? Six? Does that mean hugs? Where's that? Where's the mic? Hey, right here. Right here. <laughs> no, no stage diving. We don't have any show for that. <laughs> <laughs> You, 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 yes. What's your name? Hi, I'm Caitlin. Hello, Caitlin. Do you know Sean? Oh, no! Oh, 
We haven't actually. I'm, I've literally, I've, I've seen Ed three times, and those three times he's flying out right after the performance, or I'm flying out right after the performance. So hopefully one day. I mean, I really haven't got the chance yet, but I'm certain that we will write something. I'll force him to. Can you tell us about the video you and Camilla put out recently? Just like oh, yeah, that was. We were, I, that was actually. Uh, a year ago, or, yeah, that was a long time ago, and I just like found it in my videos and just put it on because we never we never posted it. You know what you did there? You were like, they're working on new music. Sean's probably writing for. Her. Oh, I know, I know, guaranteed. guaranteed. All right, let's... all there was people. All of us. Right there. Hi. Mm, something. There's, I love playing the guitar live, obviously, but there's some, the guitar or piano live. Um, but some, there's something really nice about sitting down at the piano. It, it feels a lot. It feels more intimate. It feels more like connected with the crowd, where the guitar is very loud. But I gotta go with guitar just because I'm, I'm better at it. Unless you have an empty Madison Square. Yes, then know. the piano is where you go. Right here, where all her friends are pointing at her. <laughs> that was the most excited reaction ever by a friend. Would you rather be friends with Dolly? Dobby or from Harry Potter? Woo! Woo! The hardest one. Probably Hagrid. I'm sorry, Dobby. Hagrid. I love how she has a question ready to go and she goes. Hello. That's all right. She's got to record thing. it. Yeah. Don't forget to hit record. <laughs> Just jam. <laughs> I'm not tripping up my words. I'm just saying, like we haven't technically like wrote a, wrote a song yet. We've jammed out. I do we should. I do we But we will. We'll write a song. Yeah. Oh, I love him. Yeah. I think he sounds insane. I, I didn't know his voice was that crazy, which is, is really really inspiring. Yes. <laughs> Hello. I, that, you know, okay, so you write these songs sometimes, and you write something like a really pretty chorus or a very pretty verse, and you can't find a, like the opposite, you know what I mean, to, to fix that puzzle, and that's one of those. So it's going to come out one day, but I just need to find it, because I don't want to release it if it's not perfect. I love that song. That's one of my favorite songs I've ever wrote. Wait, wait, wait. Question. I it allows you. I mean, like, what? when you just well, don't want to do anything, when you, just, you just want to have a Sean day and not worry yeah, about. Totally, but what motivates me to get up is. I mean, there's so many people, like, I mean, of course you guys and stuff, but I mean, when I'm home, there's so many people. I, I'm never home to see, like, my family and stuff. I'm always traveling, so when I'm home, I want to get up and see them. But when I'm away, I always want to come out and see you guys, so kind of no matter what it is, there's always something pulling me out of bed. What's that one thing you do when you do get to go home you, you must do? Like I, I, I just started watching Grey's Anatomy. Which I'm, like, I'm like, watching that forever now. I feel like I'm a doctor, like I know what to do. Who wouldn't, wouldn't mind going into a hospital and saying, Oh shit! Yeah. I wouldn't trust him, but... I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust me. Alright, let's hey, go. Yes. Mm, I'd love to do something with Rihanna one day. How about Beyonce? 
I like the medium, like but the in between where I can I can stand away from the mic and just belt out and then I can but it's not also too big. Stadiums are very hard, but also are, arenas are, are the best actually. Third album vibes. I'm not gonna tell you. Right here, right here. Find out soon. Right here! This side! Wait, soon is soon, right? How soon is soon? I was called Sir. Right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, go! What is it like to know you inspire so many people around the world and you're like their only source of happiness? Oh, thank you. Oh. Um, it's an incredible feeling. Thank you for saying that. It's very awesome. Hey, Crutch, first off, it, are, you, are you okay? <laughs> All right. All right, good. Sean, we want John Gray's Anatomy. Yes, and that would be John Gray's Anatomy. All right, so here's what's going on today, guys. So we got a lot of stuff going on. You never know who might show up at an activation that's going on, whether it be a guy standing next to me or... So here's what we're going to do. We got a lot going on this afternoon. First off, I want you to give it up for Sean Bennett. 